Hi guys, welcome to the session. Hi Raju, hello Muskan, hello Preeti, and uh, Kumari, Komal Kumari. Welcome to the session, guys. This is the third session on integration, and I hope you uh, have gone through the previous two sessions of integration, which we did, where we in the first session we talked about indefinite integration. We talked about few important questions. In the second section, we talked about your uh, definite integration we talked about very important property which was the king's property hi anjali welcome so in today's class we'll also talk about a certain property as well as we'll also talk about periodic functions and how the periodic function questions appear in your j examination so uh, first of all i'll tell you what property which we're going to be discussing the property which you're going to be discussing will be a simple one that if you have integration from a to b fx dx you can divide the interval you can divide the interval what do i mean by that you can put it from a to c fx dx plus c to d or c to b fx dx you can divide this interval into two parts now if anybody could tell me can or can c be beyond the interval a b maybe can can it be outside the interval a b hi jitendra here c may be inside or outside the interval i got them a b right interval a b i hope this is fine with all of us we already know about it i'll just quickly take one example to explain this down so see if I take an example from let's say 0 to 2 pi mod of sine x dx, mod of sine x dx. Good evening, all of you. Timnus, Gautam, Riyanshi, Raisha. Okay. Okay. So we'll, we'll just be discussing questions of J if you already know about it then probably there is no point attending the session right okay so these will be just quick points which we're going to be going through so over here what we know is that sine x sine x is positive for the interval 0 to pi so we'll say first of all we'll break it from 0 to pi we'll write it as sine x dx and then the then for the second interval which is from pi to 2 pi sine is negative so we'll put a negative one. You can say this is plus of negative sine x dx, right? In this case, we'll apply the integration. It's a basic bit. It's a basic thing. So minus cos x pi and zero. And then this is plus cos x because minus of sine x is plus cos x in terms of integration, two pi two pi. And then we'll just solve it. So this turns out to be one plus one. And this is also one plus one. So it turns out to be 2 plus 2, which is 4. So this is how we can probably utilize it, which most of you already know. So this is the property which we're going to be discussing about in today's class primarily, right? Let's get started. The first J question, which was kind of based on this property, which I wanted to take, is J means 2014 question over here. It's a simple question to understand. However, you must be very, very clear with how that property, which we just discussed, could be applied over here. So in this case, we'll say if let's say this is i, the integrand, it is from 0 to pi. Over here, this is a square plus b square minus 2ab, a square plus b square minus 2ab, which can be written as 1 minus 2 sine x by 2 whole squared. I hope this is fine with all of us. This is a simple, genuine thing which you all can see most likely. Now, few of us have this bad habit of canceling this and this, so saying that square root, whenever it comes out, it comes directly which is not always the case because if the value inside this square is negative in that case, you can't get a negative value outside the square root. So you need to take a modulus over here. You need to take a modulus sign over here dot dx. And then you need to expand this according to the sign which it will carry, which it will carry. So over here, it's a very simple thing to understand. You would say, look, one minus sine x by two will be greater than zero if sine x by two is less than one by two, right? Or that implies x by two is less than pi by six or x is less than pi by three. So whenever x is less than pi by three, this value is greater than zero. 
as soon as x becomes greater than pi by 3 this value would become greater than or uh, this value would become less than 0 so we can also write it over here that 1 minus 2 sin x pi 2 will be based on the intervals which is given to us from 0 to pi this will be less than 0 if x is greater than pi by 3 right we are considering the interval of x lying from 0 to pi in fact in this case it will be from 0 to pi by 2 because we are referring to x by 2. But anyways, I hope this is fine. So this is how the interval would be broken. So you will say i will be equal to 0 to first of all what? Pi by 3. Over here, this is what? Greater than 0. Therefore, it will open up with a positive sign. We will open this up with a positive sign. And the second interval which we have decided was from pi by t 3 to pi by 3 to pi, right? Over here, this will open up with a negative sign. So it will be negative of 1 minus 2 sign x by 2. And now integrating this is just a cakewalk. It's a simple, simple piece of maths, which you can very easily accomplish. I hope you have the answer with you guys. Any answer? If I just quickly apply, it will be x plus 4 cos x by 2. And then minus sign of taking it as common. This will again be x plus 4 cos x by 2. This is a simple integration bit. I'm not doing it. Writing all the steps over here. And I hope all of us are clear with it. Therefore, i turns out to be, if I place pi by 3 over here, so it'll be pi by 3 cos 4 plus 4 cos cos pi by 6. Cos pi by 6. Sorry. Yeah. Cos pi by 6 is. Mm -hmm. Yes, it'll be pi by six. So four by two, right? Minus zero will make it zero and minus four. D. Very good, Sachin. Negative of if I place pi, it'll be pi. Then uh, okay, cos pi by two is zero, we know about it. Pi by three. So negative, negative, positive, pi by three. And this again turns out to be minus minus plus 4 cos pi by 6 cos pi by 6 is 1 by 2 right so this is what just a moment oh i kind of goofed up over here no this is this is fine absolutely where was the issue Is there any problem? I believe there is some mistake which we have done. Yes, guys, any any idea? Anything which we've proved upon? Cos pi by 3, but this is cos x by 2, which is pi by 6, right? Mm. Pi by 6. Let me just calculate it further. It will be 2 pi. Oh, shit. Yeah, obviously. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. This will be pi by 6. It will be root 3. Yeah, that's true. Thank you. So, uh, fine enough. This will change and this will also change. No. This is... Oh, my God. What was I doing? That was a classy mistake. Okay. So, this is what we're going to get. Thank you very much. So, this turns out to be 2 pi by 3 minus pi. And this turns out to be 4 pi by 3 minus 4. Right? 
this if you calculate turns out to be negative 5 by 3 negative 5 by 3 plus 4 root 3 minus 4 therefore the answer to the question turns out to be d d is the correct answer for the question which uh rajput as sachin also has the correct answer that's amazing so this is how we're going to be breaking it up and this is how we're going to be doing it further let's take up one similar question which is which which came in year 2000 as well over here this was a kind of again simple question so over here this is i this is i so you can say over here look the value of log would change accordingly if i construct the graph of log x this is the this is how the graph of log x looks like e to the power minus one is the lower limit and e squared is the upper limit e squared is the upper limit which will be beyond this one so you can see that the graph will get a negative result for all the values lying between e to the power minus one to one and it will be positive for all the values lying between one to e squared so therefore you can break it into two parts break it into two parts first of all you can say e to the power minus one to one this function this entire function the value of x is positive for this interval the value of x is positive however log x is negative therefore you will open it up with a negative sign right plus one to e squared you will open it open it up with a positive sign i hope this makes sense to all of us now over here what will we do we'll assume log x to be in this case we'll assume log x to be t and change the so one upon x dx is equal to dt we know about it we'll need to change the limit as well we need to change the limit as well look khatri over here this is the graph of y is equal to log x right log x you can directly place in the value log if i'm saying log e to the power minus one log base e log e to the power minus one base e that'll be negative one so over here we are getting a negative one as the result right e squared i'll get positive two as the result log one will be zero right so from here to here we're gonna have negative values for log x from here to here we're gonna have positive values of log x so that's what we're going to be doing we'll say that this is negative and this is positive for values of x lying between e to the power minus one to the e to the power minus one to one right therefore this entire thing would be negative right therefore this entire thing would be negative and similarly for the other interval you may see from from here to here both are positive therefore we have taken it with a positive sign that's what we have done over here so as soon as we're going to replace this by t we can see that x upon dx is nothing but your uh, t upon or t times f dash t over here the limits would also change accordingly so we'll say when x is equal to e to the power minus one then t is equal to what then t is equal to minus one if x is equal to one then t is equal to zero similarly we'll replace log e to the power x as u over here some u so in this case again we'll get one upon x dx is equal to du we need to change the limits again so over here when x is equal to one u turns out to be zero when x is equal to e squared then u turns out to be two that's a kind of simple question now you will say i will turn out to be i'll just remove this as worse so we'll say i will turn out to be from where to where minus one to zero minus one sorry minus one to zero this is negative t d t plus 0 to 2 t d t i hope this is fine now we just need to place in the values back over here so it'll be minus t squared upon 2 0 and minus 1 t squared upon 2 2 and 0 right just directly need to place in the value 0 will make it 0 1 will make it 1 by 2 minus minus plus it will be plus 1 by 2 this turns out to be plus 4 by 2 which is 2 the answer to the question is 5 by 2 which is b i hope this is also clear to all of us so such questions are kind of frequent in j there is one more question of a similar type wherein we need to break the interval being given to us so over here why this is the greatest integer function the jint part then the value of the integral this is what that's what the question is talking about so basically it's always good to construct the graphs of such function 
or you can also directly place in the values it's it's all fine it's all the same basically so over here the question is referring to the values of x from pi by 2 to 3 pi by 2 so i'll construct the graph sin 2x graph from pi by 2 to 3 pi by 2 goes somewhat like this this is pi by 2 this is 3 pi by 2 this is sin 2x so this is 2 and this over here will give me negative 2 this is the graph of y is equal to sin 2 2 sin x not sin 2x 2 sin x so over here you will have some certain 1 also and minus 1 also when will the value be 1 so you will say this value will be 1 when sin x is equal to 1 by 2 sin x is 1 by 2 at pi minus pi by 6 which is 5 pi by 6 this is pi obviously and similarly this can be negative one this is negative one this can be negative one if the value of x is pi plus pi by six which is seven pi by six so pi by six will be the interval in which it will roll if you want to construct the graph of this is for j if you want to construct the graph of integral part integral part of this then what we usually do we say at pi by two the answer will be two at pi by two obviously this value will surely be two from pi by 2 to pi by 6, we just bring this graph down. This is how we construct the graph. We bring this graph down. So we'll say over here, there will be a hole. Over here, we're going to have a finite value, right? which will be 1. Similarly, from here to here, we'll have a finite value. We'll bring this graph down. And again, we'll bring this graph down up till 1. So this is like till this place. Just a moment. Put it properly. So till here you may see okay so you will bring this graph down so you'll say this will be somewhat like this and then from here to here the graph will be like this what do we mean by that that implies if x this simply means that fx which is y in this case so you may say y will be equal to 2 2 when x is pi by 2 y will be equal to 1 when x lies between a range which is pi by 2 to 5 pi by 6 right it is equal to 0 when it is between 5 pi by 6 and pi and similarly we'll just take it further it'll be minus 1 it'll be minus 1 for all the values of x lying between pi and 7 pi by 6 and minus 2 for all the further values all the further values up till 3 pi by 2 so basically we need to break the y in all these type of intervals all these intervals obviously this is just a single value it will not affect the area under the graph so we'll start from the second value we'll say this this function or this integration can be written as what we all see integration from uh, pi by 2 to 3 pi by 2 can be written as this was this was 2 sin x dx, the integration of that, that will be broken from pi by 2 to 5 pi by 6. 5 pi by 6. What is the value of the function, which was y? This was, so this is 1 over here, plus 0 times. You can avoid writing these things, though, because that will just waste time. And then from pi to 7 pi by 6, minus 1 dot dx, plus 7 pi by 6 to 3 pi by 2, minus 2 dot dx. And I hope all of us will be able to solve it further. It's a simple thing. We just need to subtract the upper limit from the lower limit over here. Plus this will be 0, obviously. It will be negative 1 times upper limit minus lower limit, minus 2 times upper limit minus lower limit. Once you'll solve it further, you will have your answer. I believe the answer to the question in this case will be negative pi by 2. You, should, you solve it further. I write you. It's OK. Just continue. C will be the answer to the question. Let's take up an advanced question. Has anyone tried this question? Has anyone tried this question? It says there is a function from R to R defined in such a manner. Fx is 
वैल्यूज एक्स लाइ बिटवीन Minus one and two, minus one and two. Now the question is referring to x squared, and the function f x squared is in the numerator. So we can say x squared would lie between zero and four. Obviously, x squared will be a positive number, so it will be greater than zero. So x squared will lie between zero and four. Now, if I talk about f x squared, f x squared, so f x squared will be integral part of x squared over here. So we'll break it into some portions. Let's have a look on that. If I say x square lies between zero and one, in this case, what will happen? In this case, f x squared, which is nothing but greatest integer function of x squared. If x square lies between zero and one, this will be zero. If x square lies between one and two, in this case, f x squared, which is again this, is nothing but is nothing but one, right? When x square Becomes greater than two. As soon as x square becomes greater than two, the result of f x square is zero. In this case, f x square turns out to be zero. So we'll say this is how we can expand f x squared based on these intervals. Similarly, we'll talk about f x plus one. F x plus one. However, if you see, this integration will be zero for this interval because f x square is zero. This integration, this entire integration will be zero because the numerator is zero. Similarly, for x square greater than two, this will again be equal to zero. So we will not be worried about the values of x squared, which are between zero and one, and when the values of x squared are between are greater than two, we'll just be worried about the values of x, which satisfies this inequality, one to x square, or x square lies between one and root two, or one and two. So if I solve it further. so we can say look if x square lies between 1 and 2 then what what values of x will we get so over here x can lie between root 2 and 1 or it can be from minus root 2 to minus 1 right this is what the outcome would be this is how we can solve it when the question is talking about the values of x greater than minus 1 so this will not be considered this is this is out of the question So we are just worried about this range of values of x, this interval. So we'll say, okay, in this interval, how will this behave? F of x plus one. For that, we need to figure out how x plus one behaves. So we'll say x plus one in this case will be root two plus one and two. So x plus one will basically be greater than two. X plus one will be greater than two. Therefore, f x plus one. So in this case. f of x plus 1 if x plus 1 is greater than 2 then f x plus 1 will be what if x plus 1 is greater than 2 then f x plus 1 is 0 so you may say that this is basically 0 for this condition hence we can finally say that the integration from whatever place to whatever place that was from minus 1 to 2 x f x squared upon Was that? Let me just count it. Okay, right here. Two plus f x plus one. This will be equal to what? You can just directly break it from one to root two as the interval, which is given over here. One to root two, and in this case, only f x square is one, turning out to be one. So we'll be left with. I'll just write all the things. X times one, two plus zero. For all the intervals, or for all the values of x which are less than one, f x square is zero. For all the values of X greater than root two, f x square is zero. For all the values of x which are greater than root two, f x is f x square is equal to zero. So the numerator turns out to be equal to zero. Similarly, for all these values, f x is f x lies between one and minus one, then still this is equal to zero. So that's why we are not writing those things plus zero and plus zero. We are not writing those things. I hope this makes sense to all of us. So now it's kind of simple. You just need to integrate that. That turns out to be x square upon four. And we need to place in the values as root two and one. So the answer, this is I. So what is I? Uh, 
2 by 4, which is 1 by 2 minus 1 by 4. That turns out to be 1 by 4. The question was asking for 4i minus 1. i is 1 by 4. So it is 4 times 1 by 4 minus 1. That turns out to be 0. Hence, the answer to the question is 0. I hope this is absolutely clear to all of us. Yeah. Achha, one last thing which I wanted to discuss over here is about the periodic functions and their properties. About the periodic functions and their properties. So we all know about these periodic functions. We all know about these periodic functions. <clears throat> these are few properties which are there on board. A function, which is a periodic function, for instance, if I talk about sine x, period is 2 pi. Right, mod of sine x. What is the period of mod of sine x? The period is pi. Right. In this case, the graph rolls like this. In this case, mod of, mod of sine x, the graph rolls like this. Right. So these are kind of examples of periodic functions which you may see. So for all such functions which you have, which repeats after a certain period, all these four properties are true. From 0 to nt, you can take n common, you can integrate from 0 to t fx tx. So it is basically 0 to n times the period fx tx. That turns out to be n times 0 to the same period fx tx. So whatever the answer in the first period is, you just need to multiply it with the number of times you are taking that period in the limits. Similarly, if it's a to a plus nt, that will again be the same. So be it from 0. So this is this is just a special case of this over here a is equal to 0 right special case of this is over here a is equal to 0 so you're going to get something like this if it is from mt to nt in that case you will get m minus n integration from 0 to t ft dx and similarly from a to b nt if n and nt and nt are the same where t is the period so in this case you will get the answer to be something like this if I take an example quickly, so it'll be kind of like this. For instance, if I'm saying 0 to 0 to let's say mm, 10 pi, 0 to 10 pi mod of sine x dx. Mod of sine x dx. So you know that mod of sine x is a periodic function as period pi, right? So you can say that this can be written as 0 to 10 times pi, where pi is nothing but t as it was mentioned over there. Hence, you can say that this can be written as 10 times 0 to pi mod of sine x. And we know that sin, mod of sine x or sine x is positive from 0 to pi. So we'll place in the value directly over here. Cos x tx with a negative sign, obviously. We'll solve it. We'll get the answer as 10 times 2, which is 20. In fact, you can remember this. If I talk about one loop of sine, one loop of sine from 0 to pi, the integration or the area of this loop is 2. 2 square units is the area of this loop. Right? OK. So you can probably utilize it in some other questions, maybe. Let's talk about one more question. So let it appear. So basically, you have uh, a lot of things which you can discuss or which you, which you can get in your exams. Few properties we have already discussed, few, few properties we are discussing in this class. This is again an important place wherein people tend to face some problems. So try to make yourself clear with this. So if you see t is greater than zero, it's a fixed real number. Fx is continuous such that fx is a periodic function wherein the period is t, wherein the period is t. So over here, this implies that f is periodic. with period t. Hence, what you can say is the question is asking for if i is equal to this, then what is the value of f of 2x dx? We know what is fx dx from 0 to t. We don't know what is f of 2x dx. So over here, let's try and quickly replace 2x by t. So we'll say, OK, let this is t. Let this is t. Therefore, 2 dx is equal to dt. 2 dx is equal to dt. All right, such in 2 dx is equal to dt. And uh, if I change the limits, I would say if x is equal to 3, then 3x will be 6. When x is equal to 3 plus 3t, then t is equal to 6 plus 60, right? So you can write it as 6, 6 plus 60 times 
FTDT. And now by the second property, which we have discussed, if it is from A to A, if you remember, A to A, then it is written in this form, right? And it is written in this form. So this turns out to be 0 to 60 FTDT. Uh, sorry, 1 upon 2 bi ka. 1 upon 2 from here. Dx is dt by 2, dt by 2. So this is 1 upon 2 FTDT. And this turns out to be 6 upon 2. So write it properly. 6 upon 2, 0 to t FTDT. And you can write this FT as FX also. B, both the things are the same. Therefore, this turns out to be 3i. Hence, the answer to the question turns out to be C. I hope this is fine. Right? So such and C was the correct answer. It wasn't A. Okay. So last question from my end, guys. Last question from my end. Show that this is equal to this. This is a very old question, 1994. But nowadays, you will, you will not get show that question. But you may get what is this equal to type question. Right? And there could be four options framed accordingly. Now, this is again a very simple question if you understand. So it is from 0 to n pi plus v. We already know that mod of sin x is periodic with period pi. So you'll say, okay, uh, we can't directly use it because it is n pi plus v. However, we can switch it or do it like this. So I can break it from here to here. Plus I can put it from here to here. Right? That will be kind of simple. So the first thing which we know is simple. It is from here to here. And can be taken outside because it has a period of pi. And this, if you see, the last property which I told you, I'll just write it down over here. The last property which I told you was if I'm integrating a plus nt to b plus nt, some fx dx. In this case, this turns out to be equal to a to b fx dx. Right. So that nt could be removed. Over here, this is from n pi plus 0 to n pi plus v. Hence, we can say that this will be 0 to v sin x dx. That's it. We already know that this value is basically 2. So this turns out to be 2n. It's good to remember this because it is used frequently. This will be this will be 2n. And over here, from 0 to v, we need to see what v is given to us as v lies between 0 and pi. So if v lies between 0 and pi, that implies sign will be positive number. So it'll be minus cos x. It'll be a positive uh, value mod of sign x. Sign x will be positive. So mod will open with a positive sign. We've taken that. So over here, we'll get something like this. So we'll get 2n. We'll place v. It'll be negative cos v minus cos 0, which is plus 1. So it is 2n plus 1 minus cos v. That's what we had to prove. 2n plus 1 minus cos v. Hence proved. Fine enough, guys. That's all what we had to see in this class. Deepak, you can post that question on Teachers Connect app. Uh, we don't have enough time left with us, so I won't be able to take up that question. However, I'll try and consider that question in the next class. Or I believe that'll be a question which will be covered in conic sections. All right. So bye, guys. Take care. Have fun. If you want to know more about J, you can refer to our uh, uh, URL, which we are probably presenting. And you can also go through the videos which are present on YouTube just to get an idea that how do J frame questions on these particular topics. Fine, guys. Till then, enjoy. Have fun. Good night and take care.